y'all welcome back to the channel if you are new here welcome my name is Kaya and today we are going to be checking out the full album Abigail by King Diamond this has been heavily requested just listening to King Diamond in general they did lose one of our recent polls uh, to the dismay of so many of y'all uh, so we're here for Moshtober, okay, with King Diamond, um, who is also, his name is Kim Bendix Peterson. So King Diamond is just one dude, uh, is what y'all told me. A Danish rock musician is what they are listed as um, on the internet. So uh, he's known for his voice. Um, I've heard through the grapevine that he's got a very very killer voice so i'm very excited he's very theatrical it seems like got some of the like corpse paint and stuff like that i don't know what to expect okay i really don't know what to expect but i'm here for it always with an open mind um and we're going to check out abigail one of my lovely subscribers sent me the physical copy the physical cd of abigail as well as another album um so you know, I'm thinking a CD unboxing. It looks like a really, really nice physical copy too. So um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we would love to have you here. Um, so feel free to do so. We are growing so fast, so quickly. We have so many videos for Moshtober plan and for the holiday season. So do, uh, you know, get cozy, get comfortable and enjoy the fall winter vibes, okay? Uh, join our Discord, The Mosh Pit. There's an invite link down below in the description. And uh, I have a P.O. box. If you want to send something to be featured in one of our metal unboxing videos, go check out that address and send something my way, girl. What you doing? So, without further ado, let's check out Abigail by King Diamond. Get my tea on, girl. It's nippy in the house. Love it. Okay. First song we are going to listen to is called Funeral. from uh, Lord of the Rings. What's his name? Gollum? Gollum. Sounds like that. A very interesting vocal so far. Haven't obviously gotten into any music yet. It's just like an interlude. It's very much setting the tone and I really, really like it. I This is from the late 80s. I think it's 87 is what it said. And I like it so far. A lot of like different layered vocals and they're all layered just so nicely in this mix here love the chimes love the vibe love the setting and i also really like i hope it's a concept album because i i like that it's called funeral and they're saying here lies like abigail you know this person abigail is dying, but it's like all these demon creatures. I digress. Let's go. Okay, and then we just go right into Arrival. 
Wait. Okay, girl. Hold on. So funeral was just a interlude. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. You know, you know what we do around here. If you're new here, welcome. This is what we do. We deep dive into the whole thing. That's right. We don't just listen and then move on. Okay. Okay. So interlude. That's what I figured. I'm already really liking the beginning sound of Arrival so far. It already is reminding me of like Iron Maiden. <laughs> uh, okay. So the opening track of King Diamond's 1987. Yes, it is a concept record. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm here for it. Okay. I'm here for it. Yes. I'm also taking off my damn Uggs. Okay. Yes, we're bringing back the bleached sweatpants, okay? All right. That's just what's going to happen. All right, here's Spooner getting to his crate, too. It's going to be great. So it is a concept album. Okay, great. Funeral depicts the funeral of the titular Abigail Le Fay, a stillborn demon child who has apparently caused much evil thus explaining the use of silver spikes to nail her. Based on this information, it can be inferred that this track really takes place at the end of the story. And the rest of the album oh, depicts the events leading up to this ending. Ooh, that's unique. That's unique. I wonder how this album cover kind of ties into it. It's a concept record. Oh. oh, I really like that it's like the end of the story and then the rest of the album is the beginning on the seventh day of July, 1777. Spinner, can you not do that please? So this isn't reviewed, but it says a common theme throughout King Diamond's albums is to use dates and numbers with a digital root of nine. What do you think about this? Tell me your thoughts. In Peterson's own words, nine is a number of satanic philosophy. Noteworthy, the number of the beast. 666 also has a digital root of nine. The date 77-1777 can be represented by 771-777. Or Jesus, one seven 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 seven. Both have a digital root of nine. That's way too many sevens, too many numbers. Not about it. Okay, so we've done our intro. Let's go ahead and get into arrival. I swear, my dogs. chickens. He sounds like one of those rubber chickens. <laughs> he does. It's uh, it kind of sounds flat just a little, but not like it like fits, but it sounds a little flat to me. 
I mean, I'm here for it. Uh, the instrumental into Arrival is fire dope nasty, especially this, like, guitar solo that just, like, wails. It just, like, whoo, sweeps this side of your headphones, and it's just ripping here. Also, the mix, the overall, like, mix and master of this record is just, it's money. And the bass and the drums sound so good. A little bit of reverb on the drums. The bass is like nice up and forward right here so you can still hear it. And he's clamming some of these like frets. It's really nice. And he's like sounds very nice. So it's very theatrical and kind of Halloween-y is what I'm getting to. <laughs> extremely talented vocalist I can already tell his highs are really really high and he has such a dynamic range I can already tell that and he can do all of these different voices and I mean it's just it's all over the place not in a bad way it's like all over the place in terms of like the mix it's just all these layered beautiful like vocal placements and everything it's just it's there pitch wise it's just more of a me personal irk of the like the way his voice is like grainy and not clean if that makes sense for those highs it sounds like a bunch of 12 year old pubescent choir girls i'm keeping it real the highs that's just what it sounds like to me right now and it sounds like one of those rubber chickens like a really, really high-pitched squeaky toy, but like with more grit. That's what I'm getting. But he's landing those notes. He's landing those notes, and he's got a, a ton of different vocal voices that he's doing. The guitar solo that just happened before I paused it, too, was n nutter butter. It was insane. I don't know what he was doing, but it was wild. And some of it was like flat and off and then it was like it started like really interesting it was just like not a guitar solo but was a guitar solo it was really tasty <laughs>
like that they had a false ending. They kind of like brought it down a little bit and then they brought it back up and then bam, just had a nice good stop. Okay, so definitely I'm, I'm digging the instrumentals. The guitar work is really nice. His falsettos are very high, very, very high for a dude. Maybe if you didn't push all of your blankets to one side of your crate, Mr. Spoon, you would have a better time of getting more comfortable in there. Oh, no, he's got a scratch. Spooner! Spooner! Hey! Spooner! Spooner! Stop scratching your damn chin. So the second track of King Diamond's 1987 concept album, Arrival, depicts the arrival of main characters Jonathan LaFay and his newly wed wife, Miriam Natias to a dark and gloomy mansion. Along the way, they meet seven mysterious horsemen that warn them of the troubling events they will encounter in that mansion, which Jonathan ignores, though he can't help but feel their words have merit. Ooh. Oh, so it's like a real concept story record. Recorded in Denmark. Oh, came out Valentine's Day? No. Just kidding. Did not come out Valentine's Day. That's my mama's birthday, February 24th. Hi, mama, if you're watching this. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. That must be it. Through the summer rain of 1845, the coach had finally arrived to the valley where the crossroads meet below and where all darkness seems to grow. People blame it on the hill, the hill where no one dares to go, the mansion where no one dares to go. Oh, look at this creepy thing. Oh, that is creep, creep, creep. Opening line sets the scene of the song, and by extension, the entire album reveals that this album is set in the summer of 1845 during a rainy night in the middle of a dark valley overlooked by a hill containing a haunted mansion that no one dares to go. All these details combined suggest to the audience that the story they're getting into is indeed a horror story, one filled with dark and foreboding elements that have yet to be revealed. Perfect for Moshtober. Coach stops. From the window, you could see seven horsemen in the night. Miriam Natias and Jonathan LaFay saw the magic in their eyes. They were so, they were in for a surprise. The bridge, we know you've come to inherit what's yours, the mansion. Take our advice and go back on this night. If you refuse, 18 will become nine. Interesting that he's mentioning nine, considering how that one unreviewed annotation from Funeral mentioned nine being something that King Diamond has a lot or mentions a lot. And typical ominous horror story fashion, the horseman leaves only a vague warning for the couple of the things to come. The phrase 18 will become nine at this point has no readily apparent meaning um, to the couple in the audience at the start. Though said meaning will become apparent later on in the album. However, by the time it does, it will be too late. All right. Man, we're really getting in. Jonathan laughed and said, get out of my way. I don't believe a word you say. The seven horsemen disappeared into the night. Someday you'll need our help, my friend. I think poor Jonathan was scared. Oh, I'm here for it. A haunted mansion, newlywed couple, metal, and a squeaky toy falsetto voice. I'm all for it. Why not? Why not? You know? So the next song we are going to listen to is the third track, A Mansion in Darkness. So now uh, the newlyweds are at their mansion, just started. They were approached by the seven horsemen. Who gave him a warning?
I really like the uh, the switch that he keeps doing from these like super high vocals to something like deeper. It's like all high, deeper, high, and then these like whispers, and then high, and then some other like interesting vocal. He's such a dynamic vocalist. It's insane. It's just like so many different voices and, and just layers and layers. And it's almost like operatic style vocals here. And he's hit two different notes, really, really high, high notes that we haven't heard yet so far on the record. Really, really high. And he did some really nice like doubles that kind of like flare out this way in the headphones. So although I'm not crazy about the sound of it, like pitch wise, it's there and the talent is there. So I, I recognize it. And this song instrumental wise is just like super drivey. So I haven't heard anything instrumentally wise that I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm catching to this song. <laughs> instrumental I don't know very much reminds me of Iron Maiden um, also the guitar solo for this song was wild as well as the one in Arrival very unique style wise and like technique wise I don't know he like did this kind of dip swell thing to like introduce his his solo and it was like Oh, tasty, tasty. And then it was kind of like the groove, the overall groove over his solo, like did sort of this halftime thing. So it was like in the pocket, but he's like still wailing over here. <laughs> it was like a really nice mix overall. Um, these vocals, man, it's not hitting me. <laughs> these highs, they're so high. I'm not going to mention it again, but I like the instrumentals. <laughs>
towards those little high notes. This whole record is just a, a, a whole, it's a whole trip. It really is. Oh my goodness. I'm having a lot of fun listening to this because this is like the first time um, I've ever listened to a concept record with this type of storyline. Um, my favorite concept record is The College Dropout by Kanye West. I mean, that's my favorite. And that, that, that one is really just sort of a vague concept of like, you know, college and like kind of living in the hood and like finding God and like trying to like, you know, just that sort of stuff. Um, and this is like purely from start to finish, like an, a real story. Um, and I really like it. I really do like it. Um, okay. So here we are with, I wanted a mansion in darkness. This is what I wanted. There we go. No notes on this one, huh? Well, here's an unapproved one. Third track to this record depicts Jonathan and Miriam, Miriam as they make their way to the mansion Jonathan inherited, continuing to ignore the signs that they should turn back before it's too late. Okay, so they received the warning, and now the song is mostly just about them, like, on their way to walking to the mansion. Um, riding up the alley in the rain, no lights to show the way. How could this ever be their home? Through the darkness, you can only see a giant shadow that swells to be a house where evil rules at night. Chorus and the shadows at the gate, they seem to be alive. The shadows at the gate alive. Everything inside was left in, untouched, so now they've gone inside the mansion, except for what the rats had got, and the dust of time that showed its mark, armed with candlelight and open eyes. Through the dark, they fought their way till every room was lit again, and the house began to breathe. It seemed to be alive alive as the candlelight began to fade and Jonathan said let's go to bed Bubba I ain't sleeping there I can tell you that right now the fireplace had ceased to burn both were fast asleep before the dawn dreaming dreaming and they did not know about the shadow the shadow on the wall it really came alive on the wall sunrise okay so now I'm assuming the fourth song takes place with their first full day in the mansion. Really, really fun, interesting concept for a record. Like just, it's just perfect for Moshtober. It's perfect for Halloween. It's just fun. And I'm, oh, oh, I bet it was like so fun to write this record and just like, I love it. <laughs> I love it so far. I didn't even realize that this album had nine songs. So he must really like the number nine. Very cool. I'm gonna go get some more tea and then we're going to continue, okay? Don't yell at me. <sighs> Drinking chamomile tea. And listening to King Diamond. So nice. Okay, so next is the family ghost so i'm assuming this is when they meet this is the first day <laughs> Sorry, I know we just started it. 
but the beginning solo, oh, that was delicious. He started it, held it for like a second, and then that one high note, they panned it. It was like immediately panned. So it's like, -da 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 -da. <laughs> just like all the way panned here. So, so nice. Very delicious. The bedroom was speechless there were so many things that he was doing with his voice and that were getting panned in certain directions <laughs> and it was like again just like uh the previous song a mansion in darkness you had high vocals these like sort of like lower kind of like gothy demon vocals high vocals whispers and then you had so many different pans like whispers being swayed this way and all different kinds of like layered vocals and high vocals being layered and I just he was there are, the like ability to switch which I'm assuming 
you know, obviously recording, he does like one vocal, layers it, does the lower vocals, layers it, you know, he doesn't do it all at once, but like live, he would have to. So if he does do that, then like the switch between super high falsetto and this like darker thing is, uh, it's really impressive. But also it leaves room for the audience to interact because he can do the high falsettos and then have the audience kind of chant those like uh, deeper kind of gothy vocals and vice versa. Um, so this one was called The Family Ghost. Also there was like a tasty breakdown in there too that was like a juicer, a real juicer. Sounds like something happened to Abigail. Sounded like she, from what I could decipher from the layers, it sounded like she got stuck in her room or something. Okay, another unreviewed one. But it said, the family ghost, the ghost of Count de la Fay comes to visit Jonathan la Fay to warn him about possession of Miriam by the spirit of Abigail. Oh, so it must be his, like, somebody in his family that haunts the place. Interesting. And he's warning him about Abigail taking hold of Miriam. Darkness came closer to the home on the following night. Okay, so sunrise. Now it's like the second night they've lived there. There. Miriam slept like a rock when Jonathan's face went white. The bedroom was ice cold, but the fire was burning still. The blinding night, the family ghost had risen again. The ghost. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Now, my friend, I am Count de la Fay. Let me take you to the crypt down below where Abigail rests. Let Miriam sleep. She never would understand. Now come, let us go. It's time to know. Interesting. This is only their second day. At least let them like get acquainted first and unpack. But where are the slippery stairs? You could easily fall and break your neck. Hand me that torch and I will lead the way to the secret in the dark. Take a look into the vault, the sarcophagus of a child. Abigail has been in here for years and years, stillborn. The spirit of Abigail is inside your wife. And there's only one way you can stop the rebirth of evil itself. You must take her life now. Whoa. The plot thickens. What? How'd that happen? What, did she always have it? I wonder. Oh, I hope that we, like, find it out. Oh, my God. This is actually, like, a... A, like spooky story like a spooky short story in like song form <laughs> all right so the next song that we are going to listen to is called the seventh day of July 1777 this is the day this is the day that they were mentioning in funeral in the opening track <laughs>
like that. At 17, da, 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 da. I like the little, like, kind of walk down that he did with his vocals. Also, the, like, I really hope he brings back the acoustic guitar. Or somehow, inter like, intertwines it into this song because it is so different than how this song starts. <laughs> so different. But it was tasty, especially because it kind of has this, like, I don't know, the acoustic guitar always has, like, sort of this, like, Spanish twist to it, but he like rang out that last note, mm, little pause, and then we go right into this completely different thing. I like it. So now I think Abigail's been pushed down the stairs. I'm, I'm trying to like, like decipher, like hear the story through the lyrics. <laughs> but it almost sounds like like an alarm of some type that kind of like fades I really like that it's a very unique way to like I don't know it's a unique guitar sound and I love that it fades it just sounds it's making me think of like a ship and a lighthouse for some reason I don't know I don't know why, but I really like the sound of that riff. <laughs>
Thursday of July. No! She cried. Not the music, I promise. Fifth track on Abigail uncovers the events from long ago that lead to burial, lead to the burial of Abigail in the crypts deep below the mansion. Oh, okay, so this is the story of Abigail. Oh, because his like family ghost is telling him, he said, like, you need to kill your wife, I think. And now maybe she's like showing him the story of what happened to her. Count de la Fay uncovered his cheating wife. Oh, so it's his like male family member. Okay, I thought it was a woman. Uncovered his cheating wife. Nine months of loving and sharing. Oh, it was a bastard child. Oh, so she was nine months pregnant, but it was like a... Uh, not his baby. How could he have been so blind? No bastard baby will inherit what's mine. Another one of her affairs have left him in despair. Ooh, she fasty. So he pushed her down the stairs to die. No, she cried in 1777 on the seventh day of July. Nice. Okay, so... This is where nine is coming into play. It's also the number of songs that are on this record. The Countess broke her neck and the embryo came out dead. Then he burned his beloved wife. Wow. And the embryo he gave a name. Abigail, you must rest in shame. Jeez, that escalated quickly. You burned her after you pushed her down the stairs? All right, Bola. Obsessed with the strange idea, he wanted to mummify. God, this dude is a freak. The girl for the future to find, and he did. So he mummified Abigail. Pushed her down the stairs to die. Poor Abigail. It's not her fault. Sounds like this Count de la Fay dude is kind of crazy. If I'm being honest. So... But that's okay. You know, we're not here to judge. We're just here for the story. So now we are going to omens. What's going to happen now? She's mummified and Abigail's possessed his new, wet, his new wife. but it almost sounded like it came like this way. Like it was super thin. It didn't go like this. It felt like it was going out and like around and super, super thin. I know I'm weird with how I visualize the music in my headphones, but that's what it sounded like. It didn't sound very full or very bell-like, but it was bell-like. <laughs>
God, his voice, dude. He can just go so high. Uh, I mean, I feel like that was fine. It was fine. Uh, the, I like the banana, like I said. Nice and catchy. They had a, they did have a break down in there that just was totally completely different than the song it was like it paused and then it went to this like kind of instrumental breakdown thing that was really tasty and then they just hopped right back in it was almost like a mini intermission <laughs> oh man king diamond <laughs> What's Abigail up to now? What's the, what's the sitch? Okay. So we return to the summer of 1845. This is after he talked to Kat, the Count. During which Jonathan and Miriam are beset by a range of omens. The church bell rings despite nobody being inside to ring it. Flowers die and wholesome stenches fill the house and in the dining room, the table is discovered set for three. In one incident, an empty cradle is discovered by Jonathan swaying in the air with both him and Miriam insisting that they didn't bring it in with them. Interesting. Yeah, it sounds like the Count is the one to blame though. Like if you need to be like mad at anybody, it needs to be the Count girl, okay? Nobody inside the church, but the bell is ringing for no reason. The flowers are dying. Oh, deadly omens. Inside the mansion, the air is unbearable. Rotten smell. Table set for three. Miriam, come here and see what I found. It's moving. An empty cradle swaying in the air. I did not bring it in here. Did you? No, no. Deadly omens. Interesting. So now just a bunch of spooky, spooky stuff. All right, the plot thickens. I like it. It's such an interesting, I've already mentioned, it's such an interesting way to have an album. I love concept albums, and this is definitely like a true concept record meets like scary story and metal, and it's, it's just fun. That's what I love about it. <laughs> All right. So next up, we have The Possession. drum vibes during like arrival and 
That's, this is such a change. Such a change. I've actually been getting into, not that it's really, it's really related, but I've been getting into Astro World by Travis Scott for my booty games. <laughs> and he has a lot of songs on there that are like two songs in one. You know, like one beat and then there's a pause for a half second and then he goes into a totally different section of the song. And this is reminding me of Stargazing, which is the, the first song off that record. Um, just a totally, completely different <laughs> track. And it's, it's, I really, really like it. wild and they're all over the place and like again I already mentioned that they're all over the place in terms of mixing it's just like so many different ranges so many different voices placements everything and uh oh, this is crazy so this song and omens had another had sections in here too like bridges that were like four measures maybe of that were totally completely different I think this one was a little longer it was probably like eight bars or something like that but it was like totally completely different than the song and then without even pausing or anything skipping a beat it just goes right back into the the regular song regular scheduled programming <laughs> the possession huh the possession I wonder, was he does such a high falsetto, dude. I wonder if he still has a voice, because that's like, that's so much. You gotta like place that really high. Because I know the, the vocalist for, I think it's Journey, that uh, doesn't have a voice anymore because of that. But she has such a high range. The day after the events of the previous track, oh man, okay, so they see the, all of the weird omens, Miriam is clearly pregnant and the fetus develops quickly, oh, that reminds me of that scene in Alien, uh, I think it was like, what, the third Alien, where she like has to use the thing to like, the laser to like cut out the, ugh, cut out the alien, girl. Jonathan realizes that the family ghost was speaking the truth. The fatal crisis begins when Jonathan accuses Abigail of possessing Miriam and Abigail through Miriam admits it. Oh snap. Crack a pop. On the very next morning when the mist was eaten away by the sun, Miriam grew hour by hour. Wow, that fast, huh? And Jonathan, he cried. He knew the ghost had been telling the truth, so this was nine. It happened just as her horseman had said in Arrival, 18 is nine, meaning that 18-year-old Miriam became pregnant because pregnancy usually lasts nine months. Interesting. It's not reviewed, but it, I, I would think it works. 
Pregnancy would not last overnight. Oh, she started singing a lullaby, rocking the cradle again, and then she said, I'm having your baby, my love. But it wasn't love. She was possessed, and he knew I will get what is rightfully mine. Speaking with different tongues, Miriam was eaten alive from inside. Again, she said, I'm having your baby, my love, but it wasn't love. She was possessed. Possessed. Oh. Speaking with different tongues, Miriam was eaten alive from inside. Ugh. Oh, okay. Let's see what, what happens next. So let's get into the title track of the whole album, Abigail. great. I love the way he's like, Epigail, na na ba na ba, la, you know, like the background vocals. It's just like perfect for crowd interaction. I love it. Epigail! <laughs>
hard stop for that one. It just fades it out. So I, he could just like jam it out. That's the one that's like the most crowd reaction. I feel like Epigale, but da na na na. I love that section. Super, super catchy. This outro too is very interesting. It's like got some like corny synth to it, but it like also is like kind of 80s synth and it like layers in. I don't know. It's very interesting. Very interesting. I was also paying attention a lot to like the lyrics and what was happening in our story as best as I could because sometimes it's hard to like follow his. Oh God, I feel like this part of my hair is so poofy. <laughs> I feel like it's hard to uh, to understand the lyrics when he's doing the falsetto. Um, okay, so Abigail. But what we know is that she's uh, she's possessed and she's no longer Miriam. That is. Climax of the story, Abigail depicts Jonathan in his struggle to save his wife Miriam, who has now been possessed by the spirit of Abigail. Abigail, I know you're in control of her brain, and I know that you're the one that's speaking through her. Yep, she's possessed her. Miriam, can you hear me? I am alive inside your wife. Miriam's dead, and I am I am her head. Abigail is stating her dominance over Miriam's body. Her mind is no more. Abigail, don't you think I know what you've done? I'll get a priest. He will know how to get her soul back. Jonathan is likely wanting a priest for an exorcism. To get her back. Our time is out. Abigail through Miriam is telling Jonathan that all hope is lost for them and Abigail has won. Remember the stairs. It's the only way. Jonathan is remembering the count from earlier in the album's advice to kill Miriam by throwing her down the stairs should she be possessed. That's so sad, though. Abigail, nothing I can do but give in. Jonathan, I agree. Yes, I do. I am alive inside your wife. Miriam's dead. I am her head. Soon I'll be free. Also, this cider is like my favorite, just so you know, next to Bold Rock. What do you think about cider? Side note. So now we have the final track called Black Horseman. Kind of hopeful.
strings. Bum ba da da da. Super subtle, but oh man, Bubba. If he brought that up more in the mix, ooh, or if he like layers it with some of those higher like violins and stuff, I'm so into it. Live, that would be so great. Because this is like, after we get through this like instrumental part and we really open up the song, it's in the pocket, dude. It's groovy. Bum ba da da da. Oh, and those like little simple taps going on with it. It's delicious. And this little accent, bum ba da da da, of the strings, fire. section it was just an accent bum ba da 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 and the second section he's doing bum ba da 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 and then taking a higher violin and matching the exact melody that he's doing bum ba da na na ma da ba da da oh fire and he did add a little bit higher so he is building onto it so oh oh he's building <laughs> and he just like slaps a thing. I don't know exactly what part of the guitar you need to slap to get that, but I know it's a string-ish, like a round string. Don't come for me, okay? I must play acoustic, okay? But that was delicious. Everything just like falls down. It's ding, bum, ba da da just goes right back into it. I think this is my favorite song off the record, far none. <laughs>
this whole song like just started out it's it's a very hopeful sounding track it really is it bothers me so much that my hair is like doing this it looks like we're you know we're gonna keep it it's fine <laughs> it was a very hopeful sounding track and I think this is my favorite one bar none I think the weakest one is the possession for me um, but Black Horseman, like, literally, that just blew my socks off. With the strings, it had some groove. It was very, very much in the pocket. God. Can you just... What is it called? The Black Horseman. Okay. Black Horseman. Oh, big notes. Okay, so this one's not approved either, but after the events of Abigail, a couple stands at the top of the stairs. Jonathan is distracted, and the possessed Miriam pushes Jonathan down the stairs. Miriam gives birth to Abigail, but dies shortly afterwards. Her last sight being of Abigail's yellow eyes. Supposedly her ghost can be heard screaming on the stairs in July ever after. The seven horsemen arrive at the mansion and discover the baby Abigail in the sarcophagus. Eating something too horrifying for the narrator to mention, though... The fact that it is found in the sarcophagus suggests that Abigail is eating her own previous body. Whoa. Appalled, they take her away to bury her in a hidden chapel in the forest with seven silver spikes driven through her body. A burial head is the intro to the album in the hope that this will prevent a further resurrection. Whoa, she pushes Jonathan down the stairs. What a twist. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Hold on. So there they stood at the top of the stairs. Miriam in the mood. Jonathan was scared. Gazing into the dark, Jonathan saw the star. For a second, he turned his back, and she was there like a ghost. She pushed him hard and clean to the bottom of the stairs. Now we're finally alone, Miriam. Abigail is here to stay. The birth of Abigail would soon be realized. The second coming of a devil in disguise, and the moon did not shine. It was darker than ever before. On the sacred night, the soul of Miriam was crying out in pain, remembering the day arrival in the rain. The pain of labor was so strong that Miriam died. The final scene was a pair of yellow eyes. You can still hear her screaming if you're walking the stairs in July. Riding from beyond, the seven horsemen would arrive before the dawn, servants of the Count. When Abigail was born the first time, oh, interesting. Oh, no, they found her in the sarcophagus. The baby Abigail was eating, oh, I cannot tell you. Cannot describe what Abigail was eating when the horseman found her, as the details are too horrible to put into words. That she was eating the corpse of her previous incarnation, so she was eating Miriam. We can assume, take her and bring her to the chapel in the forest. So go now, the ceremony and the coffin's waiting. The black horseman, that's the end of another lullaby time has come for me to say goodnight. Whoa. Dude. Okay. So I feel like we just experienced, like, we just, I, I feel like we just read, like, a scary story. <laughs> well, we were listening to a metal album the whole time. What a twist. I can't believe that she pushed Jonathan down the stairs. And then, like, she was eating Miriam after she was born. Ew. Crazy. And I feel like I can just visualize it so well. Oh, my goodness. 
Okay, so final thoughts. Let's get into this, shall we? What are your thoughts on um, on King Diamond? Because I want to know. Um, I definitely think uh, the Black Horseman warmed me up to them. I think the Black Horseman is, or Black Horseman, is my favorite um, album, record, song. God, I'm tired. I'm sorry. That's my favorite song off this record, bar none. I think that they, like, honestly had just some really delicious in-the-pocket things happening in that song, and especially with the strings. Bum, 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 bum. I don't know. It was really good. That was the one that I felt like was the most groovy and where I really feel like he shined, everybody shined the most, and I would expect nothing less from, like, a closing song for a concept record. I think the weakest song was, I, I want to say it was The Possession. Um, it was just kind of mad there wasn't too much that was holding me to it. I really liked that he had an opener with the funeral and was like, you know, here lies Abigail. And then we get into the story. I think that that's like such a unique concept. The entire thing is really unique and it's so cool that this came out in 87. It doesn't sound like it came out in 87. It sounded, it, it could be a remaster that I'm listening to. This is the one from Metal Blade that they just reposted on um, 2020, uh, April 24th, 2020. So it could be a remaster of the album, but honestly, it's just, it just doesn't sound like it's from the 80s. It, it sounds much more modern in its sound. It is kind of giving me, oh God, it is eh, kind of giving me Rocky Horror Picture Show in a, in a little essence of the way. Very like Halloween themed, very fun, just overall a really unique, concept album, unique piece of both storytelling and metal music and craft and just I love that the album cover brings it all together because it is the horseman, you know, and I was I was wondering if, if that was going to be, you know, how that was going to play into it and it turns out that the horsemen were like basically the most important part of the whole story, um, which is really cool and I love the concept of the number nine with everything. Nine songs, seventh day of July in 1777, and like how King Diamond really likes the number nine. I think that that's really cool. So I want to know more and I want to listen to more because he has a lot of other albums. Like I'm already seeing Fatal Portrait on here and I'm seeing them already and I'm wondering are those concept albums I'm hoping I would assume um as far as his vocals go I will mention again I think that he's an extremely talented vocalist I mean the the highs that he's doing are nuts 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 easily one of the like best male vocalists I've ever heard bar none I mean I think that his talent is definitely there it's obvious and just the the way he's able to switch from a lower melody to a higher melody and being able to just like layer so much, it's really cool. It's definitely like obviously he has talent. It's just sort of that like high pitched tone. It's not so, it's not clean. It's very like nasally and, and kind of like grainy to my ears and that's just a personal pet peeve that I'm not a huge fan of. So I, at first, I think it's just going to take a few more listens for me to get used to it. Cause honestly, at first when I was listening to it, I was like, Ooh, Bubba, rubber chicken squeaky toy. Okay. Like real bad, real bad. I still think that in a way, however, black horsemen, like I feel like that opened my understanding of King Diamond a lot more. Like, I feel like Black Horseman, I was like, oh, I get it now. Like, I get their sound. And it, because that song was just perfect. That song literally was just, like, the, the, the highlight of the whole album. Um, I don't think that that song had a weak moment at all. 
So I definitely feel like I understand their sound now after listening to Black Horseman and I want to hear more. And I'm hoping that by hearing more, it just that personal pet peeve of mine just goes away. <laughs> Cause I hate when you like listen to a, you know, a band and you're like, everything sounds good, but this like one part is like either personal pet peeve or it's just like one annoying like instrument or something that they add and it kind of just like ruins the whole thing. Not that his vocals, his highs ruined the record by any means. Obviously I had fun listening to it. So let me know your thoughts on Abigail. Um, let me know what you think about this. What's your favorite King Diamond record? And are they all concept records or does he have any that are just like a regular album. It'd be really cool if they were all concept records though, because like King Diamond is like such a dope name. And to be an artist, just like a solo artist that does these like concept records and has such a, a wide range of vocals, that's just really cool. So y'all also let me know the impact of King Diamond. I know y'all have mentioned a lot in the comments previously, but I want to know more. What's his impact with the genre of metal? How did he do that? How did he impact metal? How did he impact male vocalists going like out of 1987? Like people and bands, like what bands and what people were inspired by uh, King Diamond and you know, vice versa. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, the video. <laughs> so thank you so much for spending time with me today. I really, really appreciate it. I hope that you enjoyed this album reaction to Abigail. It's so fun to do these deep dives. So definitely stay tuned. We're going to be doing a lot more album deep dives rather than just like the five song discography dives. Don't worry. We're still going to get short videos. We're still going to do five songs, but these deep dives are fun. You know, it just allows for me to get more of a look into one specific project. So um, yeah, if you want more album deep dives, let me know. If you want more shorter vids, let me know. Obviously your feedback is always something that I listen to. So I have a wonderful rest of your morning, your afternoon, your evening, your night, wherever you are and whenever you are watching this, I will see you very soon. just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes.